Welcome to episode 12. In this episode, you probably expect me to install the bottom panels. However, I have been looking at those 18 foot long boards for the shear clamp for quite some time and decided now is the time to install them. Usually the shear clamps are installed after the boat is flipped over, but I decided to do it now. Recall the shear clamps are those outer rails installed along the gunnel of the boat. They will overlap the plywood sides by an inch and one quarter. It's a one and a quarter inch overlap and they'll extend four and a quarter inches above the edge of the plywood. Common to each frame and to each stern post and the stem, I removed these temporary screws attaching our shims on. These shims have been epoxied in place, but I used the screws to hold them there until it cured. Uh, recall these shims are needed to fill the gap between the shear clamps, which will overlap the plywood on this side, and the internal frames. Now the screws are removed, and these countersinks will be filled with epoxy. I use my combination square and pencil to scribe a line one and a quarter inches above the edge of the plywood. This indicates how far the shear clamp should overlap the sides of our boat. Because I want the screws attaching each shear clamp to be centered in the overlap area, I scribed a line 5 eighths of an inch in from the edge along the entire length of the first shear clamp plank. Here I have clamped the first of three layers into position on the boat. Following that line we made indicating the inch and a quarter overlap. Remember the sides flatten out over that butt block area just like they did for the chine locks. So I like to attach the shear clamps on either side before I put the screws through this area. That way we can pull the sides towards the shear clamp instead of the other way. It just helps remove that flatness we've been talking about. I used a flexible tape to lay out screw positions six inches on center along that line we made on the shear clamp, five eighths of an inch down from the edge. Here is a view after installing the first of three layers. Remember each layer is a half inch thick so the combined thickness of all three layers will be an inch and a half and the width of the shear clamp is five and a half inches. Now I am not in a rush so I decided to install one layer at a time with epoxy, let it cure overnight, and then install the next layer the following day. Instead of using a bunch of clamps I just use one and a quarter inch long screws to temporarily attach each layer. Here I am removing the screws and getting ready for the next layer. It's just the way I do it. You can do it a number of ways. After you install the second layer, any holes you have in it from fastenings when we were doing the scarfing of the panels or, or just temporary screw holes, you will notice epoxy squeezing out of these individual holes. So here's some epoxy that is squeezed out and squeezed out here. Uh, so the next day you'll have to remove these otherwise your next layer won't lay flat. It takes seven days for epoxy to fully cure. So often the next day if it's been cold, uh, the next day the, the epoxy will still be tacky and it'll gum sandpaper up quickly. So you'll want to remove these with either a plane, a chisel, uh, I actually use this, an angle grinder, and I have a 40 grit sanding wheel on there and it removes the um, epoxy and 
little bits of wood and splinters really nice and quick. Here is the final layer clamped into position and ready for temporary clamping screws. While they are dry, it's easy to get, get these layers into position and clamp them. However, once you apply the epoxy between the surfaces, things get real slippery. This board will slide all around. I think it's much easier to use the temporary screws which have their locations already pre-drilled so they line themselves up. After clamping the final layer into position, I double check there is enough length sticking out at the bow and also at the stern. Then I make a mark so I can get this layer back into the exact same position after I remove it for epoxy. Here I made the mark at the uh, butt joint, the butt joint where our two side panels are spliced. So I've made witness marks across here as I've installed each layer one at a time. Once I am happy how everything is dry clamped into place, I climbed under the boat and sat on that carpet runner there and uh, hey, it's nice to sit down on the job now and then. From the interior side of the boat, I back drill each of the screw holes with a pilot drill. Here you can see I'm picking up fastener locations that I've previously used for attaching the first and second layer. I'm now carrying those holes through. This way I don't have to do the layout on each board every time I clamp it into position. I'm just using the layout from the very first layer and back drilling through the existing holes. Just speed, speed things up. Then I gave the hole a light countersink. The reason I do this is I don't want to split the wood and until it's epoxied in position it's easy to split if you overdrive the screws. You can install the temporary screws with the heads on the interior or the exterior. It doesn't matter too much. However, however since I'm us only using uh, one and a quarter inch long screws you can see it doesn't go all the way through the thickness. So I had to install this final layer with the heads of the screw on the outside, on the exterior, because they're not long enough to come in from the back side. I would need a, a two inch plus screw to go through the plywood, which is a half inch thick, and all three half inch layers in order to get the screw uh, to attach this last layer. It's a lot easier to just put shorter screws in from the outside, I think. Here I've put uh, one screw every 12 inches. You can see I left this hole empty and that was enough to put it into position dry. After I remove and apply the epoxy and reinstall this final plank, I will put screws in these holes as well so that I have it clamped every six inches. So after removing the planks, I set them on the top of the boat here, and then I lightly sanded uh, the, the, the boards and also this previously installed layer just to remove any burrs or splinters or drilling dust. Then I vacuum up all the drilling and sanding dust. Here are my epoxy tools. I like to roll the unthickened epoxy, the straight epoxy, with these four inch uh, long high density foam rollers. They really lay the epoxy on smooth. Here is the previously installed layer after I rolled some epoxy on it. It goes on so smooth you can't even tell in this picture that it's wet with epoxy. Here are the final layers sitting on top of the boat after I rolled some epoxy on them as well so they're wet and ready to go. Then I mixed up about nine ounces of thickened epoxy on each side. Remember we thicken the straight epoxy with silica filler 
and then I use the notch trowel to spread it across the face of the previously attached layer. I install each layer as follows. You don't need to be in a rush here. That's the nice thing about working with epoxy, especially on a cold day. I do a lot of boat building during the winter time. So I'm not in a rush here. And I begin by taking one screw and I screw it near the mid span. The mid span of the plank is near this butt joint in the side panels. There's our witness mark. So just to the left of the witness mark, because this is where the plank, I'm going to offer up this plank to the boat, and this is where it's first going to touch. I take one screw and I run it in until it's sticking out about an eighth of an inch out the back side here. Okay? Then I offer up the plank to the side of the boat, and then I slide it around in the epoxy until I feel that screw tip engage the pre-drilled hole. Once I feel it slip into the hole, I run the screw in and then put a clamp on. That's it. This screw and one clamp hold that plank into position. Now I can let go of it with both hands and then I just take a handful of screws and I go around and I just start them by hand in each of the remaining holes. Here is a picture uh, from afar showing those temporary screws just started in their holes. You can see them sticking out here. Here's one for the, the frame location right here. And the board is sprung out. It's only touching the boat where this clamp and one screw are. Um, just one thing, by, by starting all the screws like this, what I'm doing, I want to explain what I'm doing here. I should explain what I'm doing, right? <laughs> the reason I'm doing this, starting them all by hand, is uh, I'm freeing up one hand to press the plank against the boat and the other hand to operate the screw gun. So I don't have to reach into my tool belt and grab out a screw each time. I just I have plenty of time before this epoxy kicks, so I'm just starting all the screws and getting them ready so I can have my hands free to do the, do the job and, and enjoy it and take my time. So here you can see the plank is touching down here by the, by the clamp and the one screw, and it's, it's really sprung back because the boat has curvature. And there's all the screws started, so all I need to do when I'm working forward from that point, I'll press the board, the plank to the boat with my right hand and actually use my left hand to run the screw in. And then I'll move up a little bit, press the board in, put that screw in. And it moves along quite nicely and then I'll go to the other side of the clamp and work with my left hand pressing the plank up against the boat and using my right hand to run the screws in. So working, from, working forward from the mid span and then aft, I push the plank tight to the boat with one hand and use the other to tighten the screws until I get a nice squeeze out of epoxy, like right there. Uh, the epoxy will continue to squeeze out for several minutes. Uh, after this time, I make a visual inspection to make sure the epoxy has squeezed out everywhere. And if it is squeezing out along the full seam, then I know I've put enough epoxy in there. I use some spring clamps as needed along the lower edge. You can use temporary screws here also if you want. The next day I remove the temporary clamping screws and cut the overhanging uh, ends off flush with the boat. Then I drilled and installed permanent deck screws using two 3 inch long screws to attach the shear clamp at each frame location. I also used two up at the stem and two at the stern posts near the transom. Between the frames, this is from inside the boat, between the frames, here's a frame here and a frame here, I used uh, one and five eighths inch long screws and there's one installed every three inches. 
the heads are obviously common to the plywood side. So there are the shear clamps fully installed. The extra four inches uh, added to the shear of the boat here really looks good. Uh, it gives the boat the proper freeboard it needs. So that is about it. So stay tuned for the next episode when I finally will install that bottom planking. So thanks for watching and God bless.